Okay, let's get started on Unit 3, Lesson 4, Shapes and Randomization. This lesson extends the drawing skills to include width and height and introduces the concept of random number generation. The class learns to draw with versions of ellipse and rectangle that include width and height parameters and to use the background block to fill the screen with color. At the end of the progression, the class is introduced to the random number block and uses the new blocks to draw a randomized rainbow snake. Look at that vocabulary, parameter, an extra piece of information passed to a function to customize it for a specific need. With that, let's move on to exercise two, rectangle size. So let's click run. Okay, so these rectangle blocks have two more parameters that you can use to control the size. Notice that the no stroke block turns off the stroke or border for the shapes. Interesting. So I wonder what that means. If I take this block away, this no stroke block away, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, so there's the no stroke takes away this black border. Okay. All right, let's take that out. Do this. Look at the code and try to figure out how the last two inputs in rectangle work. So the last two inputs they're referring to is this one, this one, okay? This one and this one. These are the width and height parameters. So if I change the width or height of this blue rectangle, it will change. So let's change the width. It's 100. Let's change it to 200. Now it should be bigger, thicker. Okay, cool. Uh, let's make the blue rectangle taller now. 200, let's change it to 400. Whoa, it's very tall, very large. All right, so let's put these numbers back to, uh, I believe they were 100 or 200. Nope, 100. Okay. And the height was definitely longer. So let's change that to 200. We want to make this image. So change the numbers in the second rectangle to make the red rectangle longer than the blue one. Okay, so if we want to make this red one longer than the blue one, are we going to change the width or the height? We're going to change the width, this block. So let's change that to, uh, let's say, 350. Look at that. It's taller, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly like this. Okay, move on to exercise three. Read this, please. It will reinforce what you are learning. Okay, exercise four. Do this. Write code that makes an orange ellipse behind the green one. Okay, an orange ellipse behind the uh, green one. Don't worry about the exact size as long as the green ellipse is entirely inside the orange one. Okay, so let's do the fill block first so we can make it a, an orange ellipse. Just type in orange. I think they should have that color. And then we're going to make an ellipse. And we want it to be bigger than the green one. So let's look at the values inside the green one. 200, 200, 200, 150. So let's just double, double all that. 400, 400, 400 is already there. And 150 times 2, 300. Let's see. Oh, whoa. Oh, okay. So the reason that this is all the way over here is because I didn't do the X and Y values uh, correctly. I wanted to change the width and height of my ellipse. I did not want to change the x and y value because that is for positioning okay so y is the orange one covering the green one and that's because the orange one comes second in our code so it's drawn on top of the green one so if you click and drag you can highlight some blocks so you don't have to drag the blocks one by one now that they are highlighted i can click these and place them above green the green ellipse so let's check this out perfect okay move on exercise five 
background. Sometimes you'll want to fill the entire screen with a color. For that, you can use background. Okay, they're referring to this block. It covers everything on the screen with the color you choose. Do this. Run the code to see background work. We did that. So the yellow background block, that's what's making it yellow. Change the background from yellow to orange. So you can type in orange. Okay, challenge. There is a purple square that is covered up by the background. Can you change the order of the code so you can see both the purple and blue squares? Okay, so we want the purple square to be drawn after the background. So all we got to do is move this code for the purple square either right here after background or below the blue square. So let's put it down here. And since it is drawn after, it will be drawn on top. Okay, perfect. Let's move on. So exercise six, let's click run. Background. Background will draw on top of everything already in your drawing. So it's important to think about the order of your code. Do this. Use background to make a black background behind the green circle, just like in this image. Okay, so uh, I do believe that we want that to be drawn first. So that will be the first thing in our code on line one. So let's put a background block there and let's type in black. Yes, perfect. All right, that's exercise six. Lesson four, or excuse me, debug using four parameters. This program uses the four parameter version of rectangle and ellipse to draw a simple scene. Oh, okay. So the, the green uh, ground is not stretched out like it is in this image. Do this. Debug this program and correct the error so that the grass extends across the entire bottom. Hint, you only have to change one number. Which parameter makes your rectangle the grass wider? Okay, keyword, wider, width. I believe width is this third parameter, so let's change it in the green rectangle in the code. Okay, uh, it's 200, so let's make it twice as wide and type in 400. Perfect. Let's move on to exercise eight. Debug using four parameters again. Now that the grass is working, Let's add a cloud to the sky. Unfortunately, it looks a little funny right now. Do this. Debug this program to make the cloud wider than it is tall, like in the image. Okay, so over here we got a very tall cloud, but over here we have a very wide cloud. I'm noticing that they look like they are the same size, just one is horizontal and one is vertical or when I pointed to the wrong ones as I said the opposite words. This one's vertical, this one's horizontal. I think we will just have to change the width and height to be the, uh, the opposite number. So we'll change the width to the same number as the height. Okay, so this is the cloud. Let's change the width. This width is 100, the height is 200. Let's change it from 100, 200 to 200, 100. Let's see how that goes. Yes, okay, so that worked out. So we change the width and then the height. Exercise nine, random numbers. Random number chooses a random number between a minimum and maximum value. You can use this code instead of writing in the specific number. If you make your drawings with random numbers, it will look a little bit different every time you run your program. So every time you run this program, something will look different. Run the program several times to see how it works. Okay. So run it several times. Okay, so click, keep clicking. And we see this orange circle changing position every time we click run. 
change the random numbers inside random number and run the code again a few times to see what changes. Okay, so this random number block was put in the X parameter. Okay, so if we take it out, the X parameter is empty. Okay, and that will break the code. So something's wrong. Let's put the random number block back inside the X parameter. So that is why 0400. That's why this orange circle is only moving left to right. Notice that it's not moving up and down. That is because it is in the X parameter. Okay? It is only moving along the X axis, not the Y axis, which is up and down. Okay. I think that's it for this exercise. Well, it says change the number. So I have 0, 0,400. Okay, and that's what it looks like. And let's change it if I want to do 300, 400. Okay, so it's not going any further left than just about here. And that's because I put the X parameter as a random number between 300 and 400. So look at the coordinates. As you can see, the x value between 300 and 400 is in this small range. And that's why the or, uh, orange circle is staying inside that range. Okay, let's move on. Read this. It will reinforce and tell us what random numbers is. You need to read this. It's very important. Okay, this is basically what I was just explaining. You know what? I'm just going to read this. Using random numbers. The random number block can be used to generate random numbers in your programs. The parameters set the minimum and maximum value that could be generated. You can use this block anywhere that you could write a number. So 1 and 6. Okay. This example is like a die, a die which is a dice, that could randomly generate any number from 1 to 6. So if you're creating a, a dice game, you would use random number 1 to 6. Drawing and random numbers. You can use random number as a parameter in drawing commands to make random drawings. With the following command, your program might generate different drawings each time it's wrong. So like I said, this is just reinforcing what we just learned. Okay, random numbers. Here's the same sun from last time. Right now, only the x coordinate is random, but you can make the y coordinate random too. Do this. Use random number for the ellipse's y parameter so the circle is drawn in a random y position too. Okay, so we get the random number tool from this drawer in the toolbox, math. And it's asking us to put a random number inside the Y parameter, too. So all you got to do is drag this into the Y parameter. As long as your circle is appearing at random X and Y positions, you can move on. Okay, so we let's put 0, 400. That's, that's what I miss. So look, now it's instead of moving in a line left to right, it's moving to random positions all across the screen. Okay, rainbow snake. This program draws a very rare breed of rainbow snake. To make the snake draw differently every time, you'll need to use random numbers. Do this. Run the program several times to see how the starter code works. Okay, so these little orange circles, they're moving randomly in that position. Add at least three new different colored circles to your rainbow snake. Use random number to make the rest of the snake's body move up and down like the first three. Okay, so hmm. let me stop this video here and I'll continue.